little close up for you. So I think it's lovely and matte. It's a really nice soft texture. Hi, welcome. My name is Lily from May Ceramics. Welcome to my studio. Today I am making a glaze and I thought I'd show you. Usually I keep my glaze recipes secret, but we're gonna find out a tip top secret today with my recipe and my process as well. Excuse my voice, I don't know if you can hear that it's sounding a little bit dodgy, I've got a little cold today. But it's not stopping me making glaze, so here we are. I am going to go through what you need, as well as the ingredients and how to put the glaze together. Here we are, this is my setup. We've got the recipe, which is the most important thing, I think. So we've got potash, feldspar, whiting, china clay, and flint. And all of these things don't add up to 100, they add up to 1,000. Um, <laughs> these are percentages, so usually the recipe would look like this. It would be something to make up 100, but if I want to make a kilogram of glaze, so I've added a zero onto each thing. And then these are my additions. I'm not going to get into too much of how glaze recipes work, but I would recommend checking out Glazy and Ceramic Materials Workshop if you would like to know more. So we've got all the ingredients here. So we've got the potash feldspar, the whiting, the china clay, the flint, and then we've got the additions. So red iron oxide, rutile, and bentonite, which sadly doesn't have a jar, poor thing. We also have a um, bucket, which is what I'm gonna weigh the materials into. Scales, which I'm using grams for, this is all in grams. A scoop, I also have a spoon, a mixing brush, a fine mesh sieve, this is 80 mesh I think, or 100 even. And we have two buckets. They are clean-ish on the inside. <laughs> We have a kilogram of water as well. I might not use all of the water, but generally you go one to one water to um, glaze material. Very importantly as well, the last thing you need is a mask. You need a good quality dust mask. So this is rated for silica dust, um, so it's FFP3. If you don't have one of these, please don't mix glaze. It's not worth the risk to your lungs. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly talk through what I do before I put my mask on in case you can't really hear me. So for each ingredient, I will weigh it out in, on the scales into my weighing container. And then I tip that into a bucket. I tick off that I have just added the material and I put it aside. Then I move on to the next material, repeat the process. The reason that you tick off every time you add something is because if you've got a complex recipe and you've tipped something and you're not really concentrating, it's very easy to completely lose track of what you've just added. So for example, these two jars of materials look incredibly similar once they've been added to a bucket. They're just white powders. It's, it is really important just to tick off what you're doing, otherwise you mess up a whole whole batch of glaze. And the reason that I am only making a kilogram of this glaze, despite it being one of my staple glazes, is that I messed something up last time I made it and made a completely bonkers glaze that doesn't work at all. So I'm remaking it, but I don't trust my recipe anymore and I don't trust my ingredients, so I'm just making a small batch so that I don't waste heaps of stuff. I want to apologise for the funny angle. This is kind of the best angle that uh, we can get. Um, whatever, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. Let's go. Okay, I've got my mask on. I've got the window open, so I've got a little bit of ventilation. We're gonna use hot ash valves bar first. So, turn your scale on, make sure it's tiered to zero with your bucket. And we're weighing 400 grams of this. Take it off. Next up we've got whiting. So we need 200 grams of whiting. Whiting is also known as calcium carbonate if you um, aren't familiar with the term whiting. China clay, also known as kaolin, or if you're in America, it's often known as EPK, 250 grams. And lastly, we have flint. 
So flint is also known as quartz or it's also known as silica. You can see that it's quite lumpy. It's all the same material, but flint is, I think, milled a little bit less, so it's a little bit chunkier. Hence why we absolutely need a sieve. So you can see it kind of, it flakes up with not too much effort. So we're using 150 grams. Perfect, exactly a thousand grams, which I love to see. So now we've got the rutile, the red iron oxide and the bentonite. These are the things that give the glaze the color. So obviously red iron oxide, incredibly red. Rutile kind of is actually more about texture. And then the bentonite to um, make the glaze a little bit more sticky so it sticks to the bisque a little bit better. So we need 100 grams of rutile, which is actually quite a lot. Here we go, add that. Red iron oxide, 3%, which is 30 grams. Beautiful color. And then lastly, the sad little bag of bentonite, which doesn't have a jar. I need to find a little jar for it. So if you have bentonite in your glaze, it's very important to add it now, rather than trying to add it to an already liquid glaze. And that's because it's incredibly sticky. So when you add it to water, it just kind of globs together and it's really hard to stir in. So you want to have it as fine as a powder and kind of mixed in with the rest of your powders. So we only need 10 grams of this, which I think is going to be Two and a bit tablespoons. This is what my glaze currently looks like, all powder. Give it a little mix up before adding my water and then I'm going to put it aside, let the water soak into it and then clean up. You want to do this part without creating too much dust so you're not sort of like giving it a proper stir and just kind of encouraging uh, the particles to <laughs> make friends here. This is mostly for the bentonite because I don't want to have big globs of it. Now I'm going to add about three quarters of the water, the rest I will use at the moment. So this is the glaze, how it's looking. I want to get this powder as not powdered as possible, as quickly as possible. Right, I'm going to let that soak in for a moment while I clean up my area to make sure it's all dust free. Now we have a nice lumpy glaze, I'm going to give it a good mix, and we've got a sieve and another bucket. Ideally I would have a immersion blender. I used to have one but it's broken so I'm stuck with the old elbow grease. So I'm just going to give it a good mix until I see most of the lumps are gone and I'm going to pour it through the sieve and add a little bit more water. That is super thick you can see. So I'm going to add the rest of this water. The total weight of my glaze ended up being um, 1140 grams, so I can add a little bit more water. I tend to like to keep it one to one on the first kind of go of the test, and then I can take away water or add water next time, but that is much, much better consistency. Now we're going to pour it through the sieve. And so we've got a little bit left here in this first bucket. I'm going to add a tiny bit more water. So I'm just mixing it through the sieve and that's going to get rid of any last lumps and kind of combine everything together really nicely. And here we have it. We've got a glaze. This is an old favourite and fingers crossed it's actually going to come out how I want it. So let's give it a, give it a quick mix and then a quick dip. Now I like this glaze thick so I'm going to dip another corner of it. Here we go, this is our test tile. I'm also gonna sacrifice a little cup to be a tester as well. It's 
So I will leave these to dry. I will sponge off my little finger marks here. I'll load them into the kiln and then I will see you in a couple of days when it comes out of the kiln and I will update you with the results of how the glaze testing went. Uh, it's been about a week, I think, since I made this glaze and uh, these are the results. It's not quite red enough for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit more red iron oxide. There's a little close up for you. So I think it's lovely and matte. It's a really nice soft texture and I really like the rutile which has made that slightly doppled effect on the glaze, uh, which yeah, I think is really beautiful. So I'm very happy with that. If you try this glaze, let me know. Send me a picture of it if you do use it. Um, let me know what it looks like for you. I'm really happy with it and I hope that this has helped you if you are brand new to mixing glaze up. Any questions, hit me below in the comments if you want to follow what I'm up to. I am May Ceramics on Instagram, I'm on TikTok as well, I'm on Facebook, I'm not that active on Facebook. Thanks very much, ciao!